Welcome back, boys and girls. We are back for another awesome lesson in God's Word. So you know what? It is time to get up and praise the Lord. I have here with me is a, you might call it a hat, but we called it a cover when I served in the Marine Corps. And uh, as you can see, it's all nicely ironed because it had to be all professional and looking neat. 
And, uh, and so it required a lot of detail, attention to detail. Thinking about my time in the Marine Corps reminds me of the, all the kind of training that I had. And a lot of it was on leadership, being a good leader. And, and when you were successful in being a good leader, you were given responsibilities to be able to teach others how to do those types of duties that you had in charge of, you were in charge of, to do them well. Being a leader is very important in our everyday living. You know, being a leader, uh, I'm, I'm reminded of, uh, of dads, of fathers, and actually it's Father's Day weekend. So hopefully you'll take the opportunity to be able to appreciate, to love on your father, grandfather, or whoever that person is that's in your life that God has brought into your life that has made a positive impact on you. But when it comes to leaders, what, what kind of characteristics do leaders have? Well, a lot of times we think of being strong and, and, and courageous and, and powerful as a leader, and those are some characteristics, but there's other things like being patient and being kind and being hardworking. And in today's lesson, we are looking at some letters that Paul wrote to some early leaders, teaching them how to lead well. More on that in a moment, but we're going to take a look at where today's story fits in with our giant timeline. Three weeks ago, we learned about how God rescued Peter from prison. Enemies of the gospel, like King Herod, were trying to stop the church from growing. But God still had plans for Peter. Two weeks ago, we learned about the Holy Spirit calling Paul and Barnabas for a specific purpose. Paul and Barnabas told Jews and Gentiles about Jesus. Last week, we learned that some churches struggled with division over things that weren't super important. Paul explained that the gospel unites all kinds of people in love. This week, we will see what God expects of leaders in the church and how leaders can effectively push the church to accomplish our mission. Now watch this video. Before Jesus returned to heaven, he told his followers that the Holy Spirit would give them power to share the gospel in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. That is exactly what happened. The early church grew, spreading out in different cities as more and more people heard the gospel and trusted in Jesus. The believers met together and leaders taught them about God and about how Christians should live. Paul wrote letters to some of the leaders in the church. Two of these leaders were Timothy and Titus. Timothy was Paul's friend. He had traveled with Paul and helped him. Now Timothy was a leader at the church in Ephesus. In his letter to Timothy, Paul reminded him not to let anyone look down on him because he was young. Paul said, be an example of what a believer says and does. Timothy could show people how to live, how to love, and how to trust God. Paul also taught Timothy to read the scriptures to the believers in the church. He taught him to be patient and to correct people when they do wrong things. Timothy could encourage believers by teaching them what is right. Timothy could teach God's word and always be ready to share the gospel. Being a leader in the church is not easy. Paul told Timothy that God had chosen him to lead. Paul wrote, do not be afraid to suffer for the Lord. Titus was a Gentile believer and leader. He was also a friend of Paul's. Titus had traveled with Paul and was on the island of Crete to help train more church leaders. When Paul wrote to Titus, he explained why believers should live in a way that pleases God. Paul explained that God is gracious to sinners. God gave us what we do not deserve when he provided the way for people to be saved from sin. Because of this, we want to do what is right. We want to live in ways that please God. Jesus died on the cross to rescue us from sin and death, and we want to do what is good 
because he loves us. We know that one day Jesus will come again. Paul wrote to guide Timothy and Titus and to help all church leaders know how to lead God's people. Church leaders help believers know what is true, and they serve the church by following the example of Jesus, who served us by dying on the cross for our sins. Can you imagine when Paul started these churches, if he would have never had anybody to lead it? It is so important to have good leaders. Why? Because the things that Paul was communicating to the people, the, God's word, the gospel, the good news, things about Jesus, people needed to understand the truth about these things and make sure that they were learning them well and not only just hearing about it, but allowing it to make a change in their life so that their lifestyle would model Jesus' lifestyle. And so in order to do this, you need good leaders. And Paul was writing these letters to, to Titus, to Timothy, and other leaders uh, of churches and being able to teach them how to do this well so that people in, in their churches would be able to model Christ and be able to teach the same to whoever they come in contact with. How is this being done in your life today? Well, you do have parents and parents lead you. You have teachers, and uh, hopefully you have a church home, our church home, or a church home, and you have leaders there that are teaching you about God's Word. And that process is raising you up to understand the things about God, God's plan for your life, what Jesus did. And so we're praying and believing through that process You'll grow to make a decision for Jesus and follow him always and teach others to do the same. See, God has set it up, a plan for, for leaders to be, to be raised up so that his word can continue through all the generations. Now, that's awesome. Now, here's Christ's connection. Paul wrote these letters to be able to communicate to those leaders in the church so that they could lead well and their people would grow in Jesus well. And so it is so important for us to keep this in mind, to have leaders to help us grow in Jesus. And you remember our big picture question and answer? What is our mission as Christians? Our mission is to make disciples of all nations by the power of the Holy Spirit. God gives us wisdom and courage and strength to be able to carry the mission to the whole world. That is our job. And it's important for us to learn how to lead. And when we do that, then we will be able to lead well and we will be successful in our mission. As we sing this song, let's thank God for his goodness of, of inviting us to be a part of his, of his plan and for him providing leaders who can teach us how to lead well and how to be able to share the gospel with whomever we come in contact with.
Our mission is to make disciples of all people, of all nations. And in order for us to do that, we need to learn how to lead well. And God will provide the people in your life to help you do that. And so let's make sure that we are learning, we are lifelong learners, and that we are open to all the opportunities God sends our ways for us to be able to lead others to Jesus. Let's pray. Father, thank you that you provide leaders for us. Help us to be humble and teachable. Give us wisdom to trust and obey you. Help these boys and girls to be powerful leaders where they are and grow these kids as the next generation of leaders in the church. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. That's all we have for today, boys and girls. Now remember, when you go out in the world, remember to lead people to Jesus. If you don't know how to do that, trust in the Holy Spirit. He will show you how. See you next time. Bye.